Good afternoon, hello, and welcome to the Omni Coalition News Show, aka Topness. This show is an amalgam of strange, weird, bizarre, off the wall, and otherwise things you don't normally see anymore from most news sources these days. During a time of political overabundance and divisiveness, we present you with more unifying topics to discuss, for the most part. For links to the articles, the music done by Carrera down there, and anything else potentially interesting, check the underbar in the description below. Anyway, I am Eo Xander, and today I am joined by. Is the Slayer, aka Red Doom Freighter. Uh -huh. <laughs> this guy is the best. My name's Carrera. Thank you, uh, Xander, for inviting me. Thank you for joining, as always. Anyway, today is Woden's Day, a.k.a. Woden's Day, also known as Wednesday, uh, November 23rd, 2022. I keep wanting to say August. I don't know why. Like, my brain is hey. just on August. I don't know. Also known as Palm Day. Palm Day, yeah. Man, it's been so long <laughs> since I saw that commercial. Like, I don't watch TV anymore. Wow. <laughs> it's it's everybody's favorite camel. <laughs> yeah. It's so like the most annoying camel, camel, but everybody loves it. Yeah. And we're not talking Great, about the one you suck on. <laughs> like oh, a cigarette, God. you know? <laughs> Carrera's face finally got it. <laughs> that was a delayed fuse. <laughs> anyway, let's jump into the news here. From Rebel News, we have Elon Musk holds referendum on general am amnesty for banned Twitter accounts. The new poll, which currently sees broad support for a general amnesty, comes just days after Musk ran a similar referendum on lifting the permanent suspension on former President Donald Trump. Well, if it's a permanent suspension, that's a ban. You know, there's a word for it already. It's called a ban. You know, suspension yeah. is temporary, ban is permanent, and you gotta, like, you know, yeah, work to get that lifted. But, yeah. Anyway, it goes on here. Elon Musk, who now owns Twitter, created a public referendum on the social media platform to ask his audience for their opinions on providing a general amnesty to suspended accounts. Musk asked, quote, Should Twitter offer a general amnesty to suspended accounts provided that they have not broken the law or engaged in egregious spam? End quote. Yes, we should. Um, uh, let's see here. Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't have a Twitter yet, but let's see. Since taking control of the platform, Musk has initiated sweeping changes to the site's censorship and moderation policies. The new poll, which currently sees broad support for a general amnesty, comes just days after Musk granted... So I've already run, read all this. And uh, For further uh, reading, please go to the link in the underbar. Um, yeah. Uh, this is a good. This is good. So. Yes, yes. Very, very good. Mm-hmm. Anyway, let's uh, move on up here. More from Rebel News. Catholic, uh, Catholic bishop threatens to close NT schools over anti-discrimination laws. Bishop says he will have little, to, but, uh, little choice but to close 18 schools if new legislation removes religious exemption. Hmm. Okay, let's see huh. here. Goes on to say, the Catholic Church has threatened to close its schools in the Northern Territory if the government's controversial anti-discrimination legislation is passed this week. This sounds Australia. Uh, the legislation removes an exemption that allows Christian schools to only hire staff who uphold the school's Christian ethos. Uh, Darwin's Bishop Charles Gashi said the church would have little choice but to close the territory's 18, pardon me, 18 schools if the new rules were legislated. Quote, if we cannot have proper Catholic schools in our school system, and I'm sure that will be true for many other of the faith schools as well, if it cannot be authentic, what's the point of having them? End quote, he said. I have to agree. You know, mm -hmm. I have to 100% agree. Like, if you're going to work at a religious place, then wouldn't it make sense that you would be a follower, at least a respecter of said religion? You know? Um, I yeah. remember... Uh, I'm not going to name names here, but it's somebody we uh, we both know uh, actually once was offered a job at some kind of a church to be a custodian, mm -hmm. but he was given yeah. one condition: you must convert to Catholic to, to Catholicism in order to get the job. Yeah. And that's honestly a dick move. You know, you can't like dangle a job in front of somebody like that and be like, "Oh, you got to be Catholic," huh? you know, like so. That's kind of an asshole yeah, thing, but at the that. same time, you know, I can I can understand you don't want someone who's like an atheist sweeping the halls of your church, you know? So, yeah. But that's something that he actually, you know, lived through. 
But, yeah. Anyway, let's move on up here. More from Rebel News. Colorado uh, Alphabet Club shooting suspect identifies as non-binary with they, them pronouns. Here we go. The lawyers request that their clients be referred to with non-binary pronouns has led to speculation on CNN and other outlets that the move may be intended to exempt Aldrich from the hate crime charges against him. Hey, huh. So what's going on here? <laughs> Public defenders representing the Colorado Alphabet Nightclub mass shooting suspects uh, say their client, Anderson Lee Aldrich, is non-binary and identifies the, through they-them pronouns. He also uses the non-binary honorific MX instead of Mr. So mix, I guess. Anyway, Aldrich, who is male, faces multiple murder and hate crime charges over the mass shooting at Club Q in Colorado Springs over the weekend. Five people were killed in the shooting. So, according to local police, Aldrich was injured during the shoot uh, shooting but was released from local hospital and booked into jail, the Denver Post reported. And, uh, yeah, for further reading, uh, go ahead and link in the underbar. Um, so, from what I'm getting at, it's uh, because he uses, or, uh, well, because they, them, uses the fu these fucking pronouns... They're going to get the hate charges dropped against them, um, which, I don't know, like, aren't all crimes hate? Like, you know, refer to that South Park thing, you know, hate crime, hate crime's a savage hypocrisy. Like, that has some extreme merit and weight to it, and, you know, in one form or another, all crimes are some form of hate. And, so, like, I don't know. Like... I can see where they're going out with dropping the hate crime charges because he is one of them. But at the same time, if they really want to like push all this agenda crap and they were going to, to do that beforehand, before they even knew who this person was, then that just tells me that they're backing off because he's one of their own. And that's not cool. Nobody is exempt. If you're going to go after someone, keep going after it. You know, don't pull back just because of something else, you know. That's just so, yeah. That's what I'm going to say about that. Um, anyway. Uh, and, uh, Bren Doom, like, have you been wanting to say something? I've been hearing you make noise, but not really making much of a combo. About that whole shooting thing? Yeah. It's like any and all crime is hate in some form. You can't just, you can't just call a hate crime just because of just because of pronouns or of your race, because that has nothing to do with it. It means you just hated that specific person enough to kill, to either attack them or kill them. Yeah. That simple. And the way they describe it is if, if you committed a hate crime, you're either a transphobe, homophobe, or a racist. It's like, that, that's not how that works. Yeah. Like, every facet of our society has been bent and twisted in so, so many ways that... Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to have trouble wondering if we're gonna get out of this. So, yeah. Anyway, moving on up, more from Rebel News here. Convoy lawyers blocked from calling suspected Nazi flag bearer. In a ruling issued <laughs> Wednesday morning by Public Order Emergency Commissioner Paul Rouleau, Freedom Corps lawyers were denied the ability to subpoena the man accused of being part of an alleged government leak plot to discredit the Freedom Convoy last January. Ah. Uh, 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 yeah, so some guy who was, like, uh, doing the, the truck during the honking, um, also put a, uh, a Nazi flag there, and, um, probably, uh, probably a government plant in order to destroy the group from within to tarnish their image to the public, you know? says, lawyers acting for anti-mandate convoy protests which demonstrated in the streets of the nation's capital in late January through, mid to, through to mid-February were denied a motion to uh, unredacted documents not protected by cabinet confidentiality. Uh, quote, I conclude that this is in essence a fishing expedition, end quote, wrote Rouleau in his 12-page decision. The lawyers were also blocked from calling for further witnesses to testify at the Public Order Emergency Commission, including Brian Fox of communications firm Enterprise Canada, whom convoy leader Brandon Miller named as a potential bearer of the Nazi flag seen at Parliament Hill on January 29th. So from what I'm getting from this, and correct me if I'm wrong, but 
it sounds like the government, who was doing everything they could to screw these truckers over, now they finally have something, and they're not following a obvious lead. So they're protecting yeah. somebody. Yeah. Obvious is obvious. Mm-hmm. This is such schoolyard shenanigans. I don't even know why this is even being able to happen. You know? Shenanigans. <laughs> I don't... I don't even... <laughs> I don't even think that this should be on the show because I feel like you're right. It's ridiculous. Like, why is that even an article? You know? Like... It shouldn't be. Yeah. Oh, Speaking of more my, ridiculous uh, things... Oh, go ahead. Oh, my, my neighbor just had a kid recently. Like, uh, I think it was just, like... A day or so ago. Oh, congratulations to them! Yeah, I just I texted him, asked him if I if he needed me to go over to his house and get some wood split for him. Is so it on a, uh, Friday morning? Is it so a I boy or a girl, or did it come back? Did it come out as a toaster or an attack helicopter? I have no idea. I'll, I'll have to. Was there no I'll, gender I'll, reveal I'll, party that burned down half a national forest? <laughs> <laughs> you're you're so <laughs> dumb, fucking <laughs> ass, dude. <laughs> Holy fuck! <laughs> but yeah, no, I was, yeah, no, I was just checking with him, see if I could go over there and split some wood, give me something to do in the morning, get up at like six or something, work there for like five, six hours, and then, and then go straight for dinner. That sounds like fun. I mean, he he's paying me to do it. So. Oh, we'll do it. Yeah. yeah, some quick money, some easy money. Yeah, it's not, it's not that it's illegal. It's just helping him out. Like he only he just like a couple bucks, get some food or some. The day it's illegal for you to go split your neighbor's wood and get paid for it out of pocket is the day we truly have fallen as an entire society. Is it? Wait, no, that's not illegal, is it? it no, it shouldn't. Getting, be. It's getting it's getting very close to that. It's getting close, but it's not like um, it's not like it's. A ridiculous amount of money. It's not like, not like I'm getting paid a hundred dollars an hour or anything. It's like, it's like something reasonable, like fifteen or something. Yeah, well, it's not like a ridiculous amount. And besides, he, he, him and I are on good terms. We're okay with it. Well, the IRS he, he, is just like, ooh, potential taxable income. <laughs> you know, like that's the IRS right there. Yeah. So. That's that's the only yeah. reason probably why they try to stomp on it. But, I mean, like, hell, like, yeah. have you heard the stories out here in California? Like, so many lemonade stands, like, like, like they don't do them really anymore. I mean, every now and then I've seen them. I saw one the other day. But they always get harassed by cops. Do you have a food license? Do you have a vending license? Do you have a, a beverage license? Like, do you have you proper need. this? Do you have proper that? Like, you know, like no. It's a lemonade well, stand. You don't need it. <laughs> yeah, well, they do. Like, in the state Anybody. of California, that, that is against oh, the law. Okay. So, oh my god. Yeah. Oh, they're ridiculous. Yeah. No, like, why do you think California is such shit? Because we have crap like that. Like, it's not just the big stuff, it's all the other crap that just makes everything even worse. There's you know? like, oh, you gotta have a license to sell something. Like, no, you don't. It's Facebook. There's this thing called Facebook. There's a marketplace, and you can sell whatever you want on there. If you operate out of California, you need a license. Even to do that on Facebook yes. Marketplace? You... Yes. Wow. I hope I hope California gets booted out of the union. Yeah. Like after you move, like after you get out of there. Actually, I'm not entirely sure if if you require a license, you know, to operate on Facebook and stuff because I've I've operated, I haven't <laughs> sold anything. Um, I really, have, I have but, something up there. No, it's like fifty bucks for like ten or eleven games or something. But in the very least, they do tax you. There is like you know sales tax on the sale because you're based out of California, so they do yeah. tax you. So. Yeah. Let's say, yeah, I do it in cash though. I like if I do sell anything, it's in cash because I don't want to be doing any. I don't want to fuck with a bank or anything. Yeah. Having to do that, that's a mess. Although the only time I would is if I'm getting a vehicle from Facebook, because like that's where that's where we got that Silverado. That's where we found. We paid like fifty for it. Uh, anyway, let's get back on track here. Right. From Rebel, Rebel News here, driver's offensive number plates canceled by Vic Rhodes. Wow. Victorian man left fuming after his car's number plates protesting Premier Dan Andrews were sacked. So Dan out. Um, 
A Victorian man who bought and registered number plates protesting Dan Andrews' leadership of Victoria has had them canceled. The plates registered to his Holden Commodore said Dan out. But days after he put them on his vehicle, the man said he received notification from Vic Rhodes that the offensive plates had been canceled. What happened to free speech? Wow. The, uh, the man uh, gave his name. Um, uh, what happened to free speech? The man who gave his name as Peter to radio said, uh, station 3AW said, photographs of the car, which also is adorned with Save Victoria Sack Dan Andrews stickers, are now circulating online. So now they're going after your license plates. Wow. Too petty. Yeah. I swear to God, people are so fucking petty anymore, dude. It's ridiculous. Yeah, there's a bunch of I It gets to the point where I'm gonna, I want to run for office, and if I get it, I'm just going to fucking crack down on everything. Just like, like if uh, they're going to be pussies, I'm going to fucking call them out and get them and, and fucking fire them. Okay, like, they're done. Donald. Done. Like, if you're going to... Well, I know, I know I sound like a nutcase for No, you that. sound like Donald talking about draining the swamp right now. I'd be like, if if you're just going to be a sensitive liberal, like, if you're just going to be a fucking leftist, fuck you. Like, you're done. Get out of here. You don't, you don't deserve rights. Like, if you're going to sit there and infringe on our rights, you don't get rights. Like, that's how I see it. Like, if you want to take someone's rights, you don't deserve them. Like, you don't even deserve, you don't deserve to run office. I'm going to say that right now. Uh, we just had an earthquake. Oh, shit. Yeah. I'm not sure if you're watching my camera. I fucking darted. Like, I went to... St stood in the doorway. Yeah, no, that was a hard one, too. Wow. Jesus. Wow. I didn't even... I wasn't even looking. <laughs> okay. Uh, whew. Wow, that was like... It was... It was, uh... uh like, you know, really hard. Like, it just... Yeah. My lighter flew away. Um, okay, well, there may be an aftershock, so, uh, just bear with me. Anyway, uh, moving right. on up here, more from Rebel News. Labor candidates' claims of Aboriginal heritage disputed by her own family. <laughs> uh, here we go again, these people. Dan Andrews has become embroiled in an argument about ethnicity after one of his candidates' claims to be indigenous after, or indigenous was disputed by relatives. Victoria Labor candidate Lauren O'Dwyer was sold herself to voters in the battleground seat of Richmond's as a proud Yorta Yorta woman. The ABC reported that O'Dwyer claimed her indigenous heritage came from her great grandfather Graham Barry, but Barry's daughter Joan Keeley has said her father was not Aboriginal and had never claimed to be. Wow. Huh. So. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm still wondering if that was really an earthquake, because it felt more like an explosion. But I didn't hear an explosion. It's funny, the past two weeks, I've heard the occasional gunshot where I'm sitting. But... Oh, yeah, no, I hear them, like, every two to three nights. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Williamsport's about as... It's like a smaller L.A. Or, well, wait, no, you're not in L.A. area, are you? I'm in the greater L.A. metropolitan area. Okay, so. okay, makes sense. Okay, so yeah, literally, Williamsport is like a way smaller version of that. It's just a scaled-down version of that area. In other words, it sucks. Mm -hmm. Huh. <laughs> In other words, it's a shithole with it, huh. for absolute speds for drivers. Yeah, let me send you say that yeah, not near as effective. I would say sped is not near as bad as saying retard, but yeah, whatever. Hold on, let me, uh, let me send me a text one. real quick. Hey, was that an earthquake I felt? Question mark. Are you okay? Question mark. Because Dad's at the gym right now. The last thing I need to know mm -hmm. is if something fucking fell on him. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on up here. More from Rebel News. Readers furious mm -hmm. as the New Zealand Herald published paid Chinese communist propaganda. Oh, my God. China historic battle against mm -hmm. poverty. Wow. News. Yeah. The New Zealand Herald has removed a paid Chinese government propaganda piece from its website after a furious backlash from readers. The paper had quietly published an article produced by China Communist Party mouthpiece The People's Daily uh, detailing Chinese President Xi Jinping's personal crusade against poverty. It featured lengthy quotes from the Communist Party dictator as well as quotes from citizens praising its leadership. But the article headlined, quote, Relocation and Revitalization, C-100 million people lifted out of poverty, end quote was quickly removed when readers complained that it was blatant communist propaganda. Yep. 
Something yep. evil is in my eye. Oh. And I think it's gone. We're good. Uh, yeah, so, yep. One thing for sure, though, from this news source, the Omni Coalition, we will never have any form of propaganda, especially from China. So, or Disney. You know, or even the yep. U.S. So, yeah. Anyway, let's move on up here. More from Rebel News. Man, we just got a lot of Rebel News here today. Offensive Grand Canyon destination gets renamed. Are you fucking kidding me? Officials from yeah. the U.S. National yeah. Park Service announced on Monday that the Board of Geographic Names voted 19 to none earlier in November to change the name of the location to Havispy Gardens. I got a DM. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Scott, I think, is looking this up right now. Uh, yeah, a two point six uh, epicenter in my city. Thank you, Scott. Wow, that's that felt more than a two point six. But uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna have to look at this, see how close I might have been on it, because like I felt a, <clears throat> you know, and then a coming from both sides. So I think it might have been right under me. Um, anyway, Indian Grand Garden, a popular hiking destination in the Grand Canyon, is having its name changed due to its offensive connotations. Officials from the U.S. National Park Service announced on Monday that the Board of Geographic Names voted 19 to none in November to change the name of the location to Havu Spy Gardens. According to Fox News, the Havu Spy Tribe passed Resolution 2921 to provide the National Park Service with a request to change the name of the location, which was originally called Ha'agoya. The tribe was forcibly relocated by NPS polices in the early 20th century, with the last member being removed in 1928. So... Well, this I can get behind, you know, because, like, Indians, like, these are not Indians, they're Native Americans, so Indian Garden, it has nothing to do with them, so I, I, I would actually support this. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on up. Uh, more from Rebel News. Elon Musk takes establishment media to task for disinformation, appears to confirm that censorship was deployed on Twitter against conservatives. Yeah, no shit. Uh, Elon yeah, Musk... Yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Elon Musk took the establishment media to task on Tuesday, holding it responsible for the disinformation it publishes on a routine basis. Musk, who now owns Twitter, has been facing a tremendous backlash from the mainstream media over his stance on free speech. Following this takeover of Twitter, the press has penned story after story, wish-casting the social media platform's supposed demise, a claim that fails to stand up to scrutiny given Twitter's ever-increasing rise in daily active users. Um, responding to conservative journalist Kyle Becker, who asked his audience to imagine what it would be like if Musk were the right-wing boogeyman these spoiled lefties journos uh, pretend uh, he is, and he decided to turn the tables and ban all left-wing fake news from Twitter, Musk pointed out that none of his, distract of his detractors in the media had been banned despite publishing lies about him and his companies. So, yeah. <laughs> You know, every passing day, you know, like, it, you know, I, I really, like, like, I, I rethink about my stance about this guy, but he's still, like, he's still behind the Neuralink, though I haven't heard anything about that in quite some time, and he's still, you know, very wealthy, very influenceable, and in the very least, if he's not evil himself, he's at least playing ball with them, but this, you know, what he's been doing with this whole Twitter thing, but, you know, maybe this could all just be a giant hoax, and I might be falling in for it, like... These, you hey, know, they, the powers that be know how to play chess. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on up here from Oddity Central. Bird fl flew over 13,500 kilometers without stopping, sets new Guinness record. How do we know? Uh, a five month old bar tailed Gotwitz recently smashed the record for long distance migration after flying 13,560 kilometers non stop over a period of 11 days. I don't. Uh, no way. Uh, every autumn, millions of migratory birds take to the sky for a long and perilous journey to escape the coming cold, feed and breed for the next few months. Uh, many of them cover impressive distances of over 10,000 kilometers or 6,200 miles. But this year, one small bird surpassed all expectations regarding long-distance flying, traveling a whopping 13,560 kilometers or 8,425 miles without stopping and setting a new Guinness record in the process. And it was all because of an unusual detour 
that could have cost the bird its life, considering that the nonstop journey pushed its flight's capacity to the limit. And it continues on here, but I want uh, people that go to the source and read, give them the foot traffic. Uh, but that makes me wonder, like, you know, did they have a drone fo following it the entire time? How do they know it didn't stop ever? Like, 11 straight days of constant flying? Like, I, I, don't, uh, I don't know, man. Although, I'm not a bird Scientologist. Or sci scientist. Um, <laughs> Scientologist. A bird Scientologist. <laughs> okay, <Tom. laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, Tom Cruise before he switched, before he got his head out of his ass. <laughs> No, he, he actually became an eagle. He's a bird Scientologist. <laughs> <laughs> he studies eagles. <laughs> no, he studies alien eagles. Aliens. So, aliens. Anyway, but that's uh that's quite a story there. Yeah, that's so. yeah. But they have no way to prove that it actually flew that far. Yeah. Non stop. They have no way. Um, if you don't mind uh, reading this uh, this headline, I gotta go uh, sneeze off camera real quick. So. Alrighty. Police released photo of Walmart manager who shot dead six people in store massacre. Ooh, that's not good. Andre Bing, 31, was named as the shooter and manager of the Walmart in Chesapeake, Virginia. Police say Bing was found dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Damn. Hmm. It continues on here. Police have released the image of the Walmart manager who shot and killed six people. Uh, Andre Bing at the age of 31. Yeah, you already uh, read that. Um, yep. Chesapeake police raided the store um, or raced to the store at 10, 12 p.m. local time to reports of an active shooter inside. They entered the store four minutes later and they found several uh, injured and deceased individuals. Three people were found dead in the break room of the store, and a further three died in the hospital. Bing was found dead by police oh. from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. He was found with one handgun and several magazines. Jesus. Mm. Well, yeah, I'm not surprised. For Walmart, you know. Anyway, moving on up more from the mirror here. Airports in the United Kingdom to ditch 100 milliliter liquids rule in hand luggage within the next two years. Airports in the UK are ditching their ban on liquids over 100 milliliters in hand luggage by 2024. Under new rules, passengers will no longer have to remove laptops from their bags and will be able to take aboard liquids over 100 milliliters. According to reports, major airports around the country will install more advanced security scanners which will allow the change in policy in the next two years. Currently, passengers failing to remove items from their bags of, or traveling with, li with liquids over 100 milliliters are considered to be the biggest cause of delays at airport security. The upcoming challenge has been described as a game changer by insiders as it is expected to reduce delays at airports. We shall see. And uh, I hope this does what they think it will. Like, that would be fantastic. Hmm. Like, I, I haven't flown in a plane in a long time myself. And I don't really travel. I never really was much of a traveler, but just, you know, out of finances. But, um... Yeah, those those people yeah. who you know frequent you know the business flyers and you know the the frequent vacationers and all that stuff like make their lives a whole lot easier. So that's pretty cool. Hmm. It was always a stupid rule, like like oh yeah, you can't bring a bottle of water with you. Yeah, what are you gonna like, do with a bottle of water? You know, like what the hell? Like, you gonna squirt somebody with water? You know, water log them or something? Get, get out of the way! I'm gonna waterboard the pilot. Oh, 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 oh. I'm gonna drown him. Boom. Oh, oh. Look at the waterboard, you boy. Put like a rag on their face, make them breathe the water in. <laughs> just stupid. And then they, <laughs> they just pass out. <laughs> but, yep. Huh? Like vodka's one thing, but water, really? Yeah. Come on, <laughs> like get a grip. Get a grip oh. on reality. Water is harmless. Yeah. Unless you make it a weapon, like you, and you'd have to be not an idiot to be able to do that. Well, I mean, like, even if you started hitting somebody over the head with a bottle of water, like, unopened, so it's still pretty hard, like, how long can you do that before somebody stops you? You know, three hits, maybe four, if you're, like, fast? I mean, if they stopped you for having fists, that'd be different. You're like, they just stopped Kratos. Oh, God. <laughs> the Kratos tries to get on the plane, like, no weapons or anything. Like, he just has his weapon sitting elsewhere, like, he had him mailed out to where he wants to go. <laughs> And, he's, and they're just like, yeah, your fists are a weapon. You, you, 
can't come in. Can't get on the plane. Like, what? And then the manager's name tag, he's, his name is Jesus. It's like, Zeus! <laughs> you just see Zeus? He just, <laughs> he just grabs him by the head and pops his head like a pimple. God! <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny. It'd be gruesome, but fucking hilarious. God. It's like, really? Like, come on, Kratos. Come on, man. Really? Anyway, from UPI, or better known as UPI, uh, Angler reels in 67.4 pound goldfish in France. Hey, it's Hecklefish. He needs to go on a diet, though. Mm. Damn. Massive goldfish. Yeah, he needs a... to lose some weight. I know. A British angler who cast his line at a carp fishery in France had his photos go viral after he reeled in a monster 67.4 pound goldfish. Uh, Blue, yeah. Wa- Blue Water Lakes, a carp fishery in Champagne, posted photos on Facebook showing Andy Hackett, 42, posing with his prize catch, a massive goldfish known locally as the carrot. So, yeah. Carrot. Uh, the, the fishery <laughs> the, the said orange. the goldfish was put into the lake 15 years ago to give anglers something interesting to catch, but it wasn't until last year the fish was noted to have grown to a size in excess of 60 pounds. Blue Water Lake shared a video of the carrot being returned to the water after being weighed and photographed. So that's good. He, he put it back in. So it's that's good. Um, but damn, that's a big fish. That's a big old guppy. <laughs> yeah. More from Oopy. Married speed eaters break world records for hot dogs and burrito. A Florida couple who are both competitive eaters broke Guinness World Records for speed eating hot dogs and a burrito. The record-keeping organization announced Miki Suto ate an entire burrito in 31.47 seconds. Holy shit. Breaking the previous record by 0.88 seconds. In the same day, she broke the the record for most hot dogs eaten in one minute, downing six to double the previous records. Uh... Sudo's husband, uh, or Sudo's husband, Nicholas Wary, ate 12 hot dogs in three minutes, beating the previous record of nine. The pair, known as the Hungry Couple, met four years ago while preparing for a competitive eating event. Do not invite them over. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not letting them in my house. No. Like. But that chef ate that burrito that fast. It must have one big throat. <laughs> Dude, like. A lot of. You can fit a lot in there. Uh, now where's Zanny when you need him? Um, but uh, but yeah, no, that makes me wonder. Like, was there ever an incident where they were behind closed doors and she mistook his burrito for a real one? I mean, whoops, gone. See, the real thing is, how the hell did they eat an entire burrito? Tell me they at least they had to have had water during that. Had to Maybe you just dip the burrito oh, in water cannot, and just swallow it whole or something. I don't know. That bad joking. I don't know a soul on this planet that can do that without choking on the on the burrito. Because they I get like no the burrito is so dry, it gets stuck in your throat. Like no way, no chance. Like that's just ridiculous. How somebody can eat it like that? It's like, or is their throat well lubricated with water? I don't know, but we are walking on dangerous down. territory with these comments. Um, I, I had to send you a DM with something I really wanted to say, but I can't on camera. Um, I, look, I think. Uh. <laughs> 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 then you, yeah, no, they must drink a lot of water. If, yeah. if they're able to just down a burrito that quick without choking on it. They have to have, like, a gallon of water in their system beforehand. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, our yeah. last story of the day. More from Oopy. Line of 45,736 knitted pom-poms become an official world record. Let's see. I'm going to refresh the page to see. Oh, yeah, there we go. There's a video. A British knitting club's line of 45,736 pom-poms was officially named the world's longest by Guinness World Records. The Brandon Yarn Bombers, part of the community beautification group Brandon in Bloom, assembled the 45,736 pom-poms, which were all knitted by volunteers into a continuous line that measured 1.35 miles long. Oh my god. Uh, Evidence from the early summer record attempt, which was timed to conclude with the platform Jubilee, was submitted to Guinness World Records, and the organization said the feat is now an official world record. The previous record was set by Eden Valley Hospice, which created a line of uh, 29,312 pom-poms in 2016. Well, this is uh, this is kind of a, a, 
a mean thing to do. Like, why? This is a hospice that's for people who are, you know, in, in you know, their, you know, not good c condition health wise. Um, and then this random knitting club, just like, oh, hey, let's go step on their record. Like, so, I don't know. But, uh, let's see here. I don't want audio. Yeah, just, uh, it's a lot of pom poms. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I wonder, how many, I wonder how many schools they went to to get cheerleader pom poms for that. Uh, I don't think they went to schools. I think they just, like, had, you know, bought them and. Oh, wait. Oh, never mind. They're pink. They never had. Then, yeah, they definitely didn't come from, come from a school. Yeah. Actually, no, that'd be a lie because they do. They actually do use pink pom poms during during October. Ah. Uh, this whole breast cancer awareness. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. But well, yeah, anyway. we, but yeah, during like. Oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll I'll finish I'll finish the story when when we're done. Okay. Anyway, that shall conclude the show. Once again, you can check the underbar in the description for any links you may be interested in, including but not limited to all things Omni Coalition. Please go check out our Rumble and BitChute. For your dose of different on and otherwise unknown news, we stream Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific Time. And that would be 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yep. For uh, for all of you and all of us, I am Xander. I am Brendoom Fraser or The Slayer. And we, of course, have Thorera. Anyway, uh, until you catch us tomorrow... Actually, no, we're not going to be doing a new show tomorrow. It's Thanksgiving. So uh, until you catch us oh, Friday, yeah. um, or if you like new, if you like history, we, we do a history show every day. So tomorrow is not an exception for this. 10 in the morning Pacific time or 1 in the afternoon Eastern time. Anyway, until you see us again, until then, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection. Rate five thumbs and subscribe. Until then, toodles. Toodles. And hydrate. Peace.